bulwark down, all of a sudden Arden can't use any of his three abilities. All three of them rely on that mobility, the dash that the bulwark prevents you from being able to do. So you can really shut down an Arden very heavily with a well-timed bulwark. We'll see whether Flash X can bring those into the game. Not only that, but Arden, honestly, I really hope to see Playoff Boy pick up an early Echo. Dropping two Gauntlets could be so huge in those team fights because once, re once a Reflex is burned, for example, let's say Celeste goes for an Aegis and tries to run out of the first Gauntlet because she doesn't want to be focused down by the Black Feather, you, you bring down or you drop down the second Gauntlet and then she has nowhere to run. So Playboy Afro can be extremely influential to uh, his team's success in this game. And honestly, Arden, back when he played on Hollywood Hammers, it was one of his best picks. So I really hope he shows up huge in this matchup. Absolutely. I can't wait to see how these late game team fights are going to be panning out. Obviously, both these compositions are very damage heavy and very much about blowing up their opponents before the same can happen to them and their team. And this is going to be such an important game. I do apologize about the delays that we are having with this third and final match of this series. I feel like we're just teasing you guys or keeping you <laughs> on the edge of your seat for this series as we're looking towards game number three. I'm going to do that thing that I do sometimes, guys. I'm going to pressure you for predictions coming into game three of this series. I did it earlier oh. today, and I'm going to do it again. Team Solo Mid against Tempo Storm. Do we have a favorite coming in here? <laughs> I mean, the favorite is Team Solo Mid. Like that, there's still no question about that. Even if Temple Storm did pick up that game one victory, you still have to say Team Solo Mid is the favorite, regardless of composition or anything of the sort. But now that we have this game the underway, or the, the series underway, I should say, and the draft completed, I mean, Temple Storm has a very, very strong chance with the draft that they have here. But I do still feel like Team Solo Mid is going to be able to overcome this. And the, the game one deficit, I think Team Solo Mid is going to be able to close out this series 2-1. to one. That's what you have to expect. That's what you have to predict just because it's TSM with so much more on the line versus Tempo Storm with a lot less on the line. Tempo Storm already locked in for the Challenger Zone. Uh, they're going to be going for those battles and those battles will be played on 2.10 uh, anyway. So they don't have a lot to do here other than pride and playing spoilers. So I, I am predicting a TSM, but my heart kind of says I want Tempo Storm to win just so that <laughs> I want Tempo Storm to win and then Tribe to lose semi powers just so that we have a very interesting dynamic of like all three teams that had chances to qualify to Worlds losing early on. It would be just uh, ironic Misery in my loves opinion. company for <laughs> yeah. Raki Zoro here. It would certainly be an interesting scenario. <laughs> I'm not jealous of whoever has to figure out those tiebreakers. It turns out it's probably me that ends up figuring that out anyway. But... I do want to remind you guys why we're all here and what's going to be happening at the end of tomorrow. We're going to be jumping into our world's draw at the end of tomorrow's broadcast. Make sure to tune in with us because on the 14th to the 17th of December, we're going to be going to Singapore and heading to the World Championship. It's going to be four groups going on in there with three teams per group, but we have to decide which teams are going into which group. And that's going to be happening at the end of tomorrow's broadcast. So make sure to tune in tomorrow. And I mean, just mentioning tomorrow, we have a whole lot of exciting games coming to everyone's faces tomorrow, but apparently the game is getting ready to go. Let's have a very quick recap of what we're expecting to see coming out in this last game between... Tempo in fact, we don't have time. We're in the loading screen. We're getting into this Let's one. Into we're going to stop talking now. We're going to pass it to our casters. Hashtag Vainglory8. Let us know who you are voting for. I've baited you all. <laughs> I've baited you all again. Production is telling uh, me that the server has it's, crashed. It's April Fools, guys. Again, it is a little April, late. <laughs> April Fools in November. Um, unfortunately, the game is just not not wanna, playing ball today. With I want to say something quickly. I've been calling Playboy Afro Playoff Boy multiple times now, and is excuse me, man. I mean, it's, it's going to be a few years before <laughs> the Playoff Boy is going to be on the fold, yes, uh, having just yes. been born earlier this yes. year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> we'll see if he has a VG future ahead of him. You definitely assume so. But this is definitely going to be an exciting game uh, coming up. So let's actually have a recap of how we expect this one to pan out. Oh, I actually also want to touch on the, the tiebreaker scenarios that we okay. talked about a little bit too. Uh, just while we have time, let's go, go into them. So uh, we, we've been talking about the potential for tiebreakers. We've already broken down a lot of what could be the potential tiebreaker scenarios. And you know, looking at Tribe and Team Solo Mid, now that Rogue is out of the you know, contention for this week, the coming into this week, the teams were 21 and 12 
as an overall record for Tribe and 21 and 10 for Team Solo Mid. Their head to head record, 4 to 2 in favor of Team Solo Mid. So that means that if Tribe 2 0 Team Solo Mid, their head to head record becomes tied and it then goes to a win loss record, the win percent record as the next tiebreaker that's less than 3% away from each other coming into this week. And that's why all these games are so important. We always talk about every single game matters. And it's because of situations like this where one single loss can drop you that 3% win percentage and knock you out of worlds potentially here. So the fact that Temple Storm already took a game off of Team Solo Mid is absolutely yeah. huge for Tribe assuming they can 2-0 Team Solo mid tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Every single game matters. And the thing is, in even in the scenario where Tribe 2-0 is Team Solo mid tomorrow, we still have a third place game to play. We still yeah. have a final to play. So there's extra games that come into that calculation as well. There's so many games still remaining to play. Yeah, I mean, there are some tiebreaker scenarios where if Tribe beats TSM 2-0 and then they win the finals 2-1, and then TSM wins the third place match. Uh, third place match. It could still go to TSM. Very, very yeah. uh, not expectable we'll, we'll scenarios, more, but it's possible. Yeah, we can get more in depth once we see those games uh -huh. come through, because then we'll have the actual numbers to back it up instead of just pure speculation at this point. But the at the end of the day, right now, if Tribe wins out this week without losing a single game, they will be the team that goes to Worlds. So. And there's a lot of pressure there. Yeah, and the reason why we keep talking about Worlds and, you know, why is it so important is because the biggest competition of the year for Vainglory in Singapore in December, all the teams, the best teams from all around the world are going to be gathering there to compete for the title of the best team in the world. It's so important. Even for the teams that don't win it, yeah. get, getting there and gaining the uh, reputation, gaining the exposure and the experience from playing against all the international teams is so important once they go back to their respective regions and play their respective competitions. Yeah, we get to see it in so many esports around the world where you, these exact same situations happen, where the teams that get the international experience bring that experience back to their home region, and it just levels up the entire region as a whole. I mean, I, I do still remember at last year's Worlds, I was talking to the team from South America, and this was like Vainglory had just started in South America earlier that year, few, a few months before the World Championship. And the team that got to play at the Worlds, they were just, they were so humbled just by the fact of being there and being yeah. like, the experience, they, they literally told me, like, the experience of just being at Worlds is going to help them so much in the future. And now they're back again. The same team from South America has qualified for this year. So they definitely took that experience and leveled up their play. And on the opposite side of that scale as well, when we get to the World Championship, we'll get to see teams like the EA teams, for example, going up against North America. Obviously, we've seen snippets of this in Mobile Masters, <laughs> but those are best of ones. How much does that really tell you? There is so much to see when we get to the I'm World Championship. I'm so excited for that EA, I, I, especially with how North America has been going on for the last two, three, we uh, three weeks. Um, before, C9 were so dominant, I was, I was expecting that they would dominate Worlds as well. But... That has not continued to be the case, and now I'm actually expecting EA to come out blazing, especially since we've been watching quite a bit of uh, that region and uh, now preparing for how they're going to be. I, I mean, I just yeah. can't wait to see all the different regions clash their different metas, their different play styles going up against one another. It's going to be so exciting. And don't forget the Southeast Asian region yeah. as well. One of these and regions China that, as well. You know, and China being there, but Southeast Asia specifically I want to talk about a little bit because they're one of these regions that kind of gets overlooked a lot when you talk about the competitive play, but it's in their backyard. There's a team who is based in Singapore that will be competing in Singapore at the World Championships, and you cannot underestimate the effect that home field advantage, yeah. so to speak, has. We've asked players about it with these unified championships, and they've said, yeah, it definitely affects them, like feeding off the energy of the crowd. If the entire stadium is there rooting for you, you yeah. feel like an extra boost of energy going into your game. So a lot of things can happen at Worlds, and it's going to be an absolute blast. All right. Well, heading towards 5v5, there have been a couple of new heroes coming on into the game. We've had Churnwalker and we've had Lorelei coming on in recently. We're going to take a quick closer look at those two new heroes. You look like you need a hug. I understand. 
the solo queue is hard sometimes, maybe join a guild. Get off my lawn. And a beautifully manicured lawn it is. Watching you fight is like watching a fish attempt to jog up a mountain. That's quite specific. Play! No, my friend. No time to play! So salty. You should always look on the bright side of life. I live underwater. My glass is always full. Welcome to the Vainglory Hero Spotlight, featuring Churnwalker. Most say the Churnwalker is a story told to frighten children or just a figment of wild imaginations. Some say the monster truly lives, stalking the wildest places in the world. A select few know the truth. The Churnwalker is only a man, twisted by the dark forces of the Churn. Martin Walker was an explorer who dedicated his life to researching and charting the unknown. While in the wilderness, the churn bypassed his protective suit and poisoned him slowly, infecting his mind, filling his head with whispers from an unknown language. At last, all that had been Martin Walker was no more. He is now the monster known the world over as the Churn Walker. <laughs> churn Walker has massive area of control potential, and it all revolves around his first ability, hook and chain. Churn Walker throws a hook toward a location, Targets that are hit by this ability are briefly slowed and chained to him. Chain targets take damage over time. However, the victim can break the chain if they manage to move far enough away from him. Landing this ability resets its cooldown, allowing Churnwalker to throw out multiple hooks in rapid succession. However, a victim who is currently chained cannot be struck by more of his hooks. Overdrive this ability to increase the damage it deals over time and extend the range of his hook. Churnwalker's second ability, Torment deals damage, and yanks all chain targets towards him. Use this to drag your enemies toward your team, or position yourself to pull enemies away when they try to jump into the back line and attack your carry. Overdriving this ability will pull chain targets even further. Sucks to be them. Turn Walker's ultimate, Trespass, slingshots him to a new location, ripping his hooks free from all his chain targets and stunning them in place. His ultimate can only be used if he has at least one target chain, and he may only select an area around chain targets to travel to. His heroic perk is Utility of Life. This empowers Churnwalker to heal himself with a portion of any damage that chain targets are dealt from anyone. Additionally, if a chained victim takes damage, other poor souls chained as well will take a portion of that damage too. Sharing is caring. That means you can take your allied Kestrel's ultimate and turn it into a one-shot Three kill. Churnwalker's heroic perk helps him excel in jungle battles. Whenever a team fight breaks out, make sure to look around for any hapless enemies to chain, including targets like jungle monsters and crystal miners. Remember, each chain he has attached will boost his healing through futility of life. Trespass is a powerful ability for locking down enemy heroes but it can also be a great repositioning tool to put you in the perfect spot to land your next hook. For example, if you can't reach the enemy carry that's standing far in the back, chain their captain, then trespass to the other side of him using your ultimate. While the captain is still recovering from your stun, you can land a second hook on your juicy target, so your team can damage your new victim by attacking either one of them. If Churnwalker can properly combo his skills together, it's easy to isolate a target from the rest of their team and serve that hero up for breakfast. Here, Churnwalker waits in the bush until an opportune moment presents itself. He throws out a hook and chain, uses Torment to yank Celeste closer to Rhyme, then immediately activates Trespass to stun. Now, normally Churnwalker wants to keep his targets chained, but in this instance, using his ultimate to break the chains allowed for a second hook to land on Celeste, keeping her in range of his ally, and finishing her off for good. Churnwalker is, at his core, a playmaker. In this sequence, Churnwalker would love to secure a kill on the fleeing Vox, but there's no way he can get close enough to do it himself. Instead, Churnwalker throws a hook 
behind him onto a jungle monster near his teammate's saw. That second chain is seriously bad news for Vox. Now that Churnwalker has both of them chained, Saw can roadie run stab the monster, sending massive damage up the chains to explode the fleeing Vox into confetti. Fear the smart Churnwalker, folks. Thanks for watching the Churnwalker Hero Spotlight. If you want to learn more about Martine Walker's Descent into Madness, check out these Walker Archives videos. See you next time. <laughs>
link on your screens, 5v5.vainglorygame.com. I'm telling you guys to sign up. Honestly, if you haven't already signed up, what have you been doing all this time? Come <laughs> on, man. We, we've th we've shouted it out a few times now. It's been all over Twitter. Make sure to sign up. Sign up with as many email addresses as you can. I cannot wait for the early access to come out. Yeah, we've gotten to talk a lot about the uh, different strategies that could come out from 5v5, mm -hmm. the different play styles that could come out from 5v5, the, the way you have to interact with the map and your teammates in 5v5. There's a lot of new intricacies, yeah. and we've only scratched the surface. We're still at the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all the different things that are going to be involved in playing the new 5v5 mode in Vainglory. So it is going to be incredibly exciting. And for anyone who is skeptical of 5v5, there's a couple of you out there I've seen around on Twitter it is not going to be replacing 3v3. 3v3 will still be a game mode in Vainglory that you can continue to play on if you so desire. So you don't have to have any worries about losing your favorite game mode with the addition of 5v5. And we don't even know yet whether 5v5 is going to be the main um, mode yep. for Vainglory, whether it's going to be the esports or not. It's all speculation. It's all going to be speculation until 5v5 comes out, until the community reacts to it. And SEMC always been one of the best companies, one of the best developers that uh, respect their community's wishes and, and develop things around them. 5v5 is going to be a really exciting one because we also don't know how it's going to be played out. You know, We don't know if it's going to be two bottom lane, one mid lane, one top, another jungle like traditional MOBAs, or whether it's going to be Completely different stuff. Maybe yeah. you, you group S5 and you go push a turret first level, and that maybe is the better thing, way to do it in Vainglory. We really don't know. And I cannot wait to get my hands on it to test out all sort of different things. And the thing is, we've seen many of those different kind of strategies coming out in other MOBAs across the course of the years, across the course of different patches and different metas. So whatever we see for 5v5 when it first comes out in Vainglory probably isn't the same thing that we'll see two, three years down the line. Things will completely change over the years. So I'm excited to see that evolution as well. And we've seen that in 3v3. We've seen historically different things being uh, being strong picks and then evolving over time and becoming captains or becoming carries and lots of different stuff like that. So I'm excited to see how 5v5 is going to be evolving over the years. Now, unfortunately, we are still having issues with the server. So we are going to go to a quick break before we jump into this third and final game between Team Solomid and Tempo Storm. Please do stick around. We'll be back into the game as soon as possible for you guys.
again everybody we are back at the analyst desk and we have been told that this server is working now we should be able to get this game underway we should be able to finally jump into game three between team solar mid and tempo storm let's take a look at the draft before we jump on into this one have a very quick recap and refresh our memories on what actually happened during this draft we've got black feather rona Arden, Lyra, Sky, and Celeste. Guys, break this one down quickly for yeah, me. Yeah, so uh, Tempo Storm seems like they're going for Black for the lane with a Sky CP in the jungle to counter this Rona coming out from TSM, but then TSM went for a Celeste to counter out the composition coming out from uh, Tempo Storm. So a lot of back and forth in the draft. Uh, in my opinion, it ended up with fairly even matchups, but it's all about the execution, honestly, like usually it is. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked about how TSM, they're going to have to be trying to peel for Best Chuck Celeste. And we've seen Best Chuck, exceptional Celeste player. But it's a different kind of peel. It's not the CC that you usually see. It's not the protection. It's just trying to burst down Tempo Storm before they can do the same to Chuck. Trying to peel your opponents away by making them have to run 
away is the goal here for Team Solo Mid. All right, well, it's time to get on into this one. We are in the loading screen, ladies and gentlemen. Tweet out with the hashtag Vainglory. Let everyone know that it is up and working again. And it's time to find out if TSM can make it to the semis or if Tempo Storm have got this one. It's time to pass it to Medic and Denomine. Thank you very much, Munch. We are back with the final game of the day here in NA. TSM up against Tempest Storm. It's 1-1 in this series, and Tempest Storm have the opportunity to play spoiler here for both TSM and for Tribe tomorrow if they win this series. Yeah, both these teams excited to get into the final game. We saw all the uh, good luck, have fun spammed out there just a minute ago. Obviously, Gasky, that Gaspy going to be in the lane on the Weapon Power Black Feather, and Hyde going to be picking up this Crystal Power Sky to try to uh, scale up the damage. We've seen it work with him before against the Rona. Can he have a repeat performance? I think the main issue for Tempo Storm is here that Best Chuck NA has got his Celeste, and he's an incredibly strong Celeste player. And uh, we can see TSM already grouping up around this Elder Triant, looking to try and claim it for their own. It will go over to them. Didn't see exactly who got it, but it was Best Chuck NA. TSM win up the first battle in the War of Attrition that is this game. Yeah, it's a, uh, an okay start there. Now, it's obviously not anything that uh, any team is going to take and just run away with over one additional camp, but it does net around 200 gold over the side of TSM, so it's it's all right. Now, Best Chuck in the lane, as you mentioned, he is a absolutely phenomenal Celeste. Celeste is actually fairly decent at making uh, making life, life difficult for a Sky. You can restrict the areas that she's allowed to Surrey Strike. You kind of control where you allow the Sky to go, as well as then, uh, you know, Blackfeather is a good counter to the Celeste, but you have to remember, there's a Rona here on Von C as well, and Rona very good into this black feather. You know what else is really good into a sky? A bright bulwark coming out from a Lyra does such a good job of uh, shutting her down as well. So I have to see if uh, Flash X is able to control that Lyra well enough to shut down this enemy sky. Hyde going for it. Once again, he's going to stand CP route. His CP Kestrel didn't do the best of jobs in the last game, however long ago that was. But Vonsi might actually be the first Ooh. to fall here as Hyde does jump in. Look for best Chuck as well, who is low on energy, but landing those Helios gets himself a kill. They're going to chase onto Playboy Afro. Here's Gatsby from the back, jumps in with a faint of heart, looking for Flash X as their first kill. Pure Sigil from Flash X boots into it, gets him the double movement speed buff, and gets himself away for the time being. Uh, it was Hyde picking up the first blood in that fight. An excellent Surrey Strike just as Von C turned back down to try to get some damage onto him. Walked right into those little missiles and was able to bring him down. But Hyde quickly paid for it with his life as Best Chuck rotated down with Flash. And they were able to uh, get a return kill very quickly. But that's Temple Storm now with a 500 gold lead here. And Flash narrowly missing out on canceling that recall out of Gatsby. So, getting into this game, again, so much on the line for Team Solo Mid. They have to be able to shut down this Sky and Blackfeather combination. It's going to be no easy task. Hyde, again, great performance on the Sky in the recent past. And then we know on the 2.9.1 uh, update, Blackfeather is a highly contested pick that, if allowed to run rampant in a fight, can build up breaking point incredibly quickly and can run away with things from there. And both teams have uh, some power picks on the current patch. You know, Rona we've been seeing a lot more. Celeste has always been very strong. Lyra as well for TSM. Uh, some very strong picks, especially in the hands of these TSM players. They are looking to chase onto Hyde a little bit here. Who Suri strikes off towards the side. This, the core collapse doesn't quite connect. And uh, so I think Hyde will be able to escape for the time being. But Vonsi is still on the chase. I'm going to turn their eyes over towards the Arden instead. Playboy Afro able to get himself away with a healing flask. And it's an ever so slight gold lead for Tempo Storm, but nothing for TSM to be worried about for the time being. Yeah, Tempo still has their jungle to clean out, though. They were able to take away all three of those back minions out of Von C's jungle. Hyde making really aggressive rotations and putting them to the fullest effect that he can. Now sitting on 1300 gold and may look to buy that Dragon's Eye, but he has to be cautious as Bonsi and Flash are down here, but he'll go ahead and take the safe route and recall again, probably the Dragon's Eye for the first item. 
Yeah, there it is, and Best Chuck has completed his as well, while Bonsi and Gatsby are both, uh, they appear at least to be working into the Serpent's Mask, uh, respectively. And I'm a little surprised Gatsby's not going into the Poison Shiv against a Lyra. That seems like it could potentially be a mistake. Uh, maybe just waiting on it, although don't usually see people go with the Serpent's Mask and then the Poison Shiv afterwards, so I have to wait and see. Uh, Gatsby wants that Serpent's Mask for the extra healing, of course, uh, into these prolonged trades, especially against Poke. Having that extra bit of healing can help you out a huge amount. But still, it will be uh, be intriguing to see how effective Flash X is on this Lyra later on with the Imperial Sigils, because we've seen how strong her heals can be, especially if you go for that Crucible and get extra health under your belt. She's gone for the Ferentine first, though, as has uh, Playboy Afro. And neither team really able to take too commanding a position this early on. As expected, it's a little bit of a slower start from both these teams. I think I think the uh, fountain is just kind of the safe route to go on a Lyra. The Crucible is better if you get a an edge early, and that hasn't been done. But a stun on the Chuck. Looking from the death from above, Chuck's able to get away. You were a lot more excited about that than I think either of the teams were in that situation. It's one of those like, oh, the sun lands, but we're actually not going to be able to chase him out here anyway. Just, I just want to be able to see a crazy, aggressive 40 kill game out yeah, of you just Temple want Storm. Action now, man. You just want action. It's, it's getting late over there in Europe. Just trying to uh, make sure you have plenty of excitement to keep you uh, awake and alive throughout this game. If I, if I die from lack of excitement, that is a, a very odd death to happen. <laughs> I can tell you that's not, a, that's not a medical cause of death. We can't write that on a medical certificate of death if you were. Uh, if anyone ever tells you, ah, oh, I was so excited I just died. Probably lying. Uh, at least exaggerating. Yeah. Hyperbole, I believe it's uh, called. But <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, you cannot exaggerate how important this game is for TSM as they are looking to secure their second world in a row. Uh, they need to win this game and then be able to get more points than Tribe in the current, uh, than Rogue, sorry, in the current days, and Tribe, to uh, secure themselves that spot. But uh, winning this series is the first step on a road to Singapore. And again, for anybody that may not have been with us earlier, Rogue did end up losing their game to Cloud9, so they will not be able to acquire any more points. They did get one, but they are done for the weekend, so both Tribe and Team Solo Mid are the two teams still in the running with Rogue of getting that world spot. And, you know, if TSM lose here, their road ends, and it's solely on Tribe to be able to win the weekend and catch up. And Temple Storm have been looking like a formidable opponent, but Hyde has to be so careful. All three members of TSM are here. Daddy does looking for a little bit of an engage on towards these Treants. The he land down Imperial Sigil from Flash X as they get forced away, but Von C gets the Treant for himself, and TSM are fine with that. No gain really from Temple Storm off that invade, but they do start up the Gold Miner, and TSM are going to try and fight away from it. There is the Gauntlet coming out. Flash X has the Arcane Passage, put the Imperial Sigil down. Arcane Passage is out, Gold Miner down to half. And TSM still looking to come in here because Best Chuck still has the Solar Storm and can re engage this. Temple Storm needs to be careful. They've used those ults already. Here comes Von C, all diving on towards that Black Feather. Both for what comes out. Best Chuck with the Sol Core Collapse is going to get the stun off. Playboy Afro is so low. Best Chuck still alive and already the first blood going down. The Fountain used very late as well. The Sui Strike coming out from uh, Hyde here, but he's got no place to go. The Red Mist from Von C, chased away by Hyde, but into the fray. Gets the kill, Von C secures it, and TSM get two kills and get themselves out to safety. And one key thing right before that fight broke out was Best Chuck has reached level 8. Is he going to die in the lane to play with Afro? The, the legend here on this Arden going to hunt down a return kill as we uh, apparently zoom in onto Chuck's body. Got to gotta thank our cameraman over there, making sure we all know that Best Chuck died. But level 8 on Celeste is the first like real big spike she has she gets the overdrive into the heliogenesis that gives her a little bit of additional range and in turn provides a little additional safety for her positioning as uh there's a little bit of a trading here in the lane but nothing major Gatsby and uh Vonsi pretty even as far as their build goes so Vonsi doing a good job out of the jungle here 50 cs in 10 minutes, so he's right on par, and then uh, looking up in the lane, 
We are at about 80 something on both of the both of the carries. So both teams fairly evenly farmed up right now, but it's team solo mid with the gold advantage. They are going to be looking to abuse the range and the zoning potential that best Chuck has at every single point they can. And if they get an opportunity to get on a turret, they have so much objective advantage that uh, Temple Storm just does not have at this point in the game. That they do. The issue is, of course, getting the effective damage down on towards these turrets as well. Gatsby's taking a few Helios to the face, but it's nothing too major at the moment. Von C has now finished his breaking point, so he'll be looking for some aggressive trades into Temple Storm. He's actually snuck in here past that flare. He's going to get onto Horde's hide. Pops up the red mist. There's the gauntlet coming out from Tempo Storm as they try and disengage the chase from Gatsby onto Best Chuck. Rose offensive use as well. The core collapse comes out. Hyde's already gone down and now TSM looking for the rest of the fight. They go into Gatsby who's trying to run his way away. Can he escape from Von C? Spinning up the axes. Cannot quite get close enough to catch onto Gatsby but with an into the fray and a red mist. It should be a kill onto this Black Feather. There we go. Two kills to zero in favor of TSM. And now they are looking pretty darn dominant in this series. And fortunately for the side of Tempo, the gauntlet it felt a little misplaced in that last fight. It was a good gauntlet that actually separated Von C and Best Chuck, but because Gatsby and Hyde were too far away to actually capitalize and get onto Chuck, they weren't able to get anything out of the activation. And as a result, TSM pick up a couple kills, they pick up a turret, and they pick up a gold mine and now sit 3,000 gold ahead of the opposition as uh, Von C has completed the breaking point, as well as Gatsby, and Best Chuck working into the uh, into the broken myth now. So looking at the build specifically, the jungler for TSM and the laner for Temple Storm are fairly even, but Best Chuck is far ahead of the crystal carry on the side of Temple Storm. So as far as the builds go, TSM have a pretty distinct advantage right now. That they do just so far ahead. We're starting to see infusions picked up. Gatsby's just finished his, but he's all the way back in base. TSM looking for a bit of an invade into the jungle of Tempo Storm, but cannot find anything for the time being. I mean, taking that first turret does give them the ability to get a bit more vision control as well. Something Flash X has been so good at is laying scout traps deep into the enemy jungle. We saw it last game against Hyde. Hyde basically couldn't move anywhere on that CP Celeste, but now. They are just going to try and catch out Gatsby. There is the stun lock. The Bright what comes out as well, but he's going to Rose Offensive. The Solar Storm, not enough. And Gatsby actually able to dodge around this fight. Von C spins up the Red Mist, but doesn't have the damage to chase into Tempo Storm any further. And TSM will just try and force back the Black Feather. Maybe get some damage down onto this turret. Of course, Supernovas do such a chunk at this point. I mean, we'll get some damage down. I think Gatsby's going to be here in time to save this, although... One more Helio might be enough. Von C will secure the turret. There's the gauntlet as well. Hide. I clear out this wave, but second gauntlet comes out with the echo. Von C is stunned up by that, and now it's on best Chuck to do the damage on towards Gatsby. The red mist is coming down, and Tempo Storm are getting shredded out. One for one, two for one now in favor of TSM. Von C goes in for the chase on towards Hyde as well, and I'm not sure Hyde has too many places to go. The arcane passage from Flash X, but a good use of it by Hyde will get him away. He's got Suri Strike back up just about now can try and dodge away but he dodges straight into the face of flash x and tsm should it eventually be able to secure this kill will they get the ace is the big question yes they will ace. and with ace buff minions they can go take the gold miner let the minions push in and secure themselves a 6,000 gold lead in this game that was quite a long fight but team solomon are able to find the ace they're looking to get a gold mine they did get this turret during the middle of that push as well so they're doing a good job keeping up the aggression and extending their gold lead every chance they get now, I do want to make note, this is on 2.9.1, so the Celeste does not have the massive changes to energy that we had in our most recent update, and as a result, we did look in that last fight, Best Chuck was pretty energy starved, he was getting quite low, so, you know, we will have to be kind of moderate on our energy management here on the Celeste, he has the Broken Myth complete, he also has a tier 2 armor, so I'm interested to see if he ends up going into a fourth offensive item, or if he ends up picking up a block since that gauntlet can be so devastating to his cause. Yeah, especially with being echoed out as well, usually you can rely on your roam to get the crucible off at a good time, but if there's two gauntlets, it's very difficult to actually plan out exactly how you're going to block out. They could just try and continue to fight before 
Those two gauntlets really become too much of a problem. Best Chuck getting some damage down with the Helios across the wall. Looking for the supers. There is the Bright Bulwark as well. Von C actually dodges out this Solar Storm. Absolutely collapses on the face of Playboy Afo. Eventually he will fall. Chase onto Gatsby and Hyde as well. But it looks like TSM may just oh. be looking for turrets here. Von C went very deep. Doesn't get too much more out of it. But TSM get one kill. The Kraken is alive and TSM might turn their eyes towards getting a fourth team member for the time being. And they're looking for that Kraken and Celeste will take it down so quickly as well as Rona actually does a decent chunk of damage to that objective as well. Temple Storm are going to have to make their way over here if they want to contest it, but it looks like they're uh, just looking to get a little bit of additional gold in their pocket so that they can perhaps be ready for the next fight that is inevitably coming directly to their front door at this choke point turret. Echo is complete for Flash X, so, uh, you know, likely going to be used on that bright bulwark to limit Hyde's movement as much as he possibly can, and that's going to allow Von C and Best Chuck to be able to rein in the damage. They are now on this choke point turret. Can they do this medic? Can they end this on one push? If they can, it would be pretty impressive. A long wait for this game, but it will have lived up to the hype if TSM can end here. They have got the Kraken pushing in on that choke point turret. They'll take it out incredibly quickly. It has already fallen, and now Tempo are on their last legs, the last stand, the last defense for them. Best Chuck chases away. The reflex used. The Kraken continues to push in, waiting for this gauntlet to fall off. There we go. TSM now stride forward. Confident prideful as they push into the base of Tempo Storm. Good stun onto Playboy Afro. The gauntlet has been laid down, but it's more of a battle arena as the two teams spin up. The Red Mist doing a lot of work as TSM looking for these kills. How low is best Chuck? He's taken down and already the Kraken gets a turret. One of the crystal turrets has fallen as Tempo Storm now realize they have a fourth team member of TSM to deal with. They will go for the Kraken instead of TSM who have backed away from the base. And this Kraken is getting pretty close. One more hit will do. Will she land it? She will. The Tempo Storm base is now cracked wide open, and they are going to be looking to defend their final push here against Team Solo Mid. Best Chuck is getting ready to come back onto the fold. He has gone into that block, so he will be able to get out of a gauntlet if he needs to. He has 2,500 gold in his pocket as well. Well, there he's moving a little bit. Oh, he's now sold that block, block and got block a clockwork. Work. Nice. There is a fourth offensive item, gets him that uh, extra max energy as well in the energy recharge that we were talking about him lacking in some of the last fights. This will be able to uh, help him spam out a few more of his abilities. Obviously, the core collapse will come up a little bit sooner, as well as the solar storm. And a couple of seconds on either of those cooldowns could change the way a fight uh, really breaks out. You know, one additional stun trying to chase down Hyde or even a Solar Storm just snipe out that one last target. Here's the gauntlet. From the side, Death from Above rains down on towards Flash X. There's the Solar Storm. The Red Mist spins up as well. And Playboy Afro alongside Hyde are the two remaining members of Tempo Storm. They need to survive. They need to get away because otherwise TSM just win this game. Playboy Afro dead. Hyde is trying to dodge his way around, but he cannot escape from Von C, who is 8 1 and 3. And TSM secure their spot in the semi finals tomorrow and keep on the road to Worlds as well. Just a few more points needed for them to secure that world's qualification. And they are within reaching, within touch. They can feel that Singaporean flight at their grasp. And I believe it's only three more points that Team Solo Mid will need tomorrow. I'll have to double check the standings. Do not hold me to that. But it's very, very close and their chances are looking good tomorrow. Obviously, they have a chance at picking up an additional six points if they're able to win the whole weekend, but it's not going to be an easy path ahead of them. Obviously, with Tribe still in the running, they're going to be bringing their A game.